So I've got some firewood in the back of the truck, some walnut and some other just fence row wood really. I need to cut this up into more manageable pieces. And I've got the smallest saw that I own out here. It's amazing that this thing still runs. An 015L steel top handle. They started making these in the mid or early 70s and then they stopped making them I think in 1983. If I could be wrong on that, but if that's correct, the youngest that this could be would be like 38 years old. That is the youngest. It can only get older from there. It still works. This thing has points in it. Let's use it. It actually runs pretty good. So let's do a cold start on this thing. I, I did run it probably three weeks ago, so it's not set for too long. No primer bulb or anything, just a choke lever, which is fine. That's very common for steels. Give it a little fuel. Let's not flood it. Come on. Okay, so it's not going to run. We're going to have to give her a boost. So one thing that all these old chainsaws have in common is that the air filters on them are horrible designs. Almost all of the old saws are like that. So this one does not like to start that easily if it sets for a long time. It's hard for it to get fuel up in the carburetor, so usually I'll prime it a bit. It's always been like that, and I have put a kit in it. That should be a plenty. And uh, let's see if she will take off now. I know I'm not the only one who's, who has enjoyed a big sliver of metal shoot off one of the tops of these mushroomed tools and drive under my skin. I had a piece the size, of, almost the size of a pea, shoot into my arm. It was amazingly painful and uh, not something you would expect unless somebody told you about it. But yeah, these mushroomed heads really need removed. People have talked about it in the past, but on any tool like a chisel or anything, not a good idea when they get mushroomed out like that there's you may look at it oh man the target's bigger no there's no support under these mushroomed edges and uh, if you clip it they'll shear off and come flying back at you hopefully not into your eyeball so although i don't have a choice on some of this i did not cut this firewood into links i just picked it up out of a fence row i like to leave the majority of my wood in as big as chunks as i can that will fit inside of the stove that I'm using. I think that it just burns slower that way. I know some people split it up into little wedges and it burns hot and fast that way. But, you know, I want some like that to get a fire going or to, you know, boost the fire a bit if I, if I need to. But the majority of my wood, I like to be in big chunks. And if I don't need to split it, I won't. Hi, Bobby. What are you doing? What are you doing, Mr. Bob? Hmm? What are you doing, Mr. Bob?
So some of the major downfalls to the older saws like this is that the chain speed on them is pretty low, so they cut a little slower than you know, your modern saws, and they're quite a bit heavier as well. But other than that, like I mentioned, I think that this does not have a chain break. So I like a chain break. Anytime I set a saw down, you know, I lock the chain. That way you don't slip and fall on it. Or, you know, while you're moving around in the brush, you can lock the chain. It's just a good idea. And uh, I know why they put them on there, but this is, this predates safety. This wood chip's good, is he? So here's a little tech tip for you. Probably didn't know. I don't know. Some of you probably do know. The more teeth that a chain has on it, the more magnetic it is, and the more likely it is to hit nails, bullets, horseshoes. I've actually cut horseshoes in two with this thing. How people put horseshoes in trees, I'll never know. But I've cut through them. Um, fence wire, rebar. Every time I use this saw, most I hit something metal, and then I have to spend an hour sharpening it. So splitting a piece of wood, I ended up getting my wedge stuck. Used this little saw to kind of cut it free, and of course I hit the wedge with the saw. Just ever so slightly doled it up, but instead of continuing to cut with this thing, even though it is cutting, I find that it's almost always better just to just to keep them sharp, right? Don't let them get too dull, you'll work yourself to death. Just painted one link, and I worked my way around. Do one side, and then do the other. Just trying to do equal amount of strokes on each tooth. That way, I kind of get them uh, relatively even. Just following the original angle that's in, that's in the chain already. Not trying to change it. chunk of the wedge. So a viewer of the channel, Scott Oswald, come down from where? Uh, Knoxville. Knoxville. Knoxville, Tennessee. He had contacted me earlier. A lot of people know I've been working on my old Chevy short bed and that the axles are completely, they're hooped really, wore completely out of that truck. And he contacted me, said he had a pretty good set. So let Scott explain to you what he knows about these axles. Well, these axles <clears throat> came off of a military CUCV uh, M109, 308 gears, uh, 22, 24,000 original miles. Uh, we worked on the customer's vehicle and uh, we upgraded it, and then these axles were leftovers, uh, and I didn't have a use for them. And then I saw Steve's video and basically they found a new home. Yeah, yeah. Let me show them to you a little closer. 
So if I'm correct, Scott, these these are 8.5, correct? Eight, Ten bolt, same, basically the same thing that I currently have, except for these are 308 gears. 308 gears, correct? Yep. And we, uh, yeah, I I bought these from Scott. I also got uh, the springs that come out from under that truck. Uh, I'll show you those as well. A little heavier than what my truck was originally equipped with, and these are some really good looking axles. Supposedly really low miles, brake lines and stuff are good, obviously not from too salty of an area. So I look forward to, to getting these up under the trucks, or up under the truck. Let's take a look at the springs and the other stuff that uh, Scott brought down. So the front springs are stock style uh, replacements. Obviously they have uh, more leaves than the stock 2-3 that comes factory on the square body trucks. Uh, still has the military wrap uh, front spring and the rear springs uh, are a little bit heavier which they're the military and they have the double uh, spring clamps so the overload doesn't separate from the main pack uh, so they're a little bit better. Um, so pretty much they're civilian style vehicle uh, Chevy made but they're basically built for the military which have a little bit upgraded and then of course these front springs obviously they're with the tag uh, they're a replacement front spring um, to do this the negative arch ones to have a little bit better ride uh, than the factory ones. Scott was also nice enough to bring me down a front drive shaft. Now this is out of an automatic truck? An automatic truck, turbo 400, 208, uh, new tr process 208 transfer case, which is longer than the SM465 uh, 205 have. combo. Yep, but the problem that I have with the one in my truck right now is that the spline here where they slide back and forth is completely wore out. So mine is, I mean, I got a half inch of movement side to side. This drive shaft is gonna be longer, but I plan to, it's got a bad ball joint in, uh, in the knuckle here. It'll have to be replaced. And I'll cut this thing down to the proper length and it should bolt right up after that. That's what I hope anyway. Correct. These deer are so quiet, I mean, you don't even notice them until they're right up on you. your help real quick. I'm gonna need new boots. I'm gonna be here all the way at the end of these. What, your riding boots? Yeah, I'm gonna be here all the way at the end. Well, these are like, how much are these? Like 300? Yep, yep, they're a good job. These are expensive, and they're, I'm, I'm, uh, my feet are already touching the very end. They grow the lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs>
Um, yeah, we're trying to get this in the garage. It's a little awkward. So this front end here will potentially be the replacement for the front end that's under my truck right now. Now this has 308 gears in it. My truck currently has 373s. So this has a higher gear ratio, which should give me a little more top end speed down the road, less low end, but that's perfectly fine with the gear ratio that's in the transfer case and the transmission on that truck. It should actually give me a usable low gear. The rear end that I'm going to be putting in it out of the same vehicle that this come out of, same ratio. So I first want to see what kind of condition that this thing's in before I commit to starting to take out the front end that's on my truck. I want to tear it down, get a look at it, replace anything that needs to be replaced, and uh, go from there. So, wheel bearings sound good on the passenger side. Check the uh, driver's side, see how that sounds. Hub works. Yeah, bearings sound good. That's good. So I'm going to pull the diff cover here, check the ring and pinion spider gears. Tie a string to your drain plug screw. That way you don't lose it. That's been that's been handy for me because I've lost them before. This has got a heavy undercoating on it. See some water, it's not good. I don't know how much though. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, I don't know. It's where it's set outside, I'm sure. We'll see. Hopefully it didn't hoop the bearings. That's why you pull them apart. All right, so a little diesel fuel. Spray it out good. It's definitely got some rust in it from this cover, is what it looks like. The gears and stuff in there look okay. Um, but we'll see as we get a little deeper into it.
check that out. That's why you trust nothing. Check everything. So here's the way that these hubs work. When you twist the end to lock in the hubs, it pushes in this part here, which pushes on another section here, which engages with a set of splines back there and lock the axle itself or the spindle the hub to the actual drive shaft. It turns the whole unit. Or if you unlock the hub, you disconnect the front end. So while driving down the road, if you're not currently using four wheel drive and you have unlock or you have hubs that unlock, it'll save you gas and money and wear and tear on the front end to keep those hubs unlocked. I know 99% of people know that, but if you didn't, now you do. A bit of water's been in there. So even though this front end is, it's a low mile front end, but it's still a low mile front end from the 1980s and the grease in the bearings and stuff is not going to be any good. It's obviously had a little bit of moisture in it because they, they all do. Any one you find that of this age is going to probably be very similar to this one. I think all the bearings and stuff are good in it. You know, it just needs a good service, a good tear down and go on, and a good going over. If we need to replace any of the U-joints, we will, but we definitely got to replace all the lubricants and make sure that everything is good and clean. There's no reason to put this thing up under that truck unless it's you know, as good as it can be. Let's just say that. I'm not going to try to make it new, but as long as it's good and reliable. So driving in deep water is just asking for trouble. Any of your modern vehicles, they're all the same. You know, they comprise of seals and gaskets that uh, are not perfectly sealed and water can get in those and does and cause a lot of problems. So here's a little trick to getting this nut off. It has those four cutouts in it. Those are quarter inch cutouts and they make a special socket that goes on there that you can turn off. I don't have that socket and I've always just used a piece of key stock like this. It's half inch wide by quarter inch thick and these hubs are splined on the inside. Probably most of them are. You could probably find a piece that work on whatever you're working on, as long as it's of a similar design. And I just wedge it in there like that, and then turn if I can, just like that. You can tighten it up the same way. Just put that key stock in there. It locks in the hub, catches in the one of the squares. It's not the most elegant way, but it works. Most people use a punch and they beat these uh, lock nuts all to pieces. But that's the best way I've found. That's still not the right way, but you get the idea. Works. Get our lock ring off there. Got a bunch of holes in it that it's keyed to the spindle through the key and then there's a stud on this back nut that locks into that and keeps your wheel bearings from working loose you know over time Definitely needed a grease change.
So we got the end of the knuckle off. Inside of that is a cage set of needle bearings that ride on this drive axle. Those are good, but all of the rubber seals, this one, broken. So we'll replace those. I mean, why, why would you not? And probably this universal joint and the other one as well. There's our drive axle for the front. That universal joint feels good, but you know, it is 35 years old, so. And it's a non-greasable joint as well. So. So there's our two front drive axles. I need to clean this one up. This is the driver's side and the passenger side. The passenger side, universal's good. I'm gonna replace it anyway. And then the driver's side is bad. It's just super tight, right? It is 35 years old. So we're gonna replace that as well. And the seals. So this is an old original Spicer U-joint. These front drive axle uh, universals are the ones that people will avoid changing at all costs. They'll run them to their completely worn apart. I've seen that so many times. I've replaced a bunch of these. But they're really not all that bad, although you do have to remove quite a bit of stuff to get these drive axles out. Uh, you know, if you've got one that needs replaced, just go ahead and go ahead and do it. It probably won't be as bad as you think. It'll probably be worse. using a file here to clean up the seat where this mounts to the hub. I used a, a chisel to get this off because they stick pretty hard on there. They uh, wedge up in there tight and I raised up a couple burrs so I'm just knocking all those back down and cleaning up this space that way we'll put some anti-seize on this and when we bolt it up it'll bolt up good and tight and it shouldn't stick if we ever shouldn't be stuck if we ever have to go back in there and take it apart again. I'm also polishing up the areas where the seats ride, just because I don't want to get my new seals. We be using a little burgundy Scotch-Brite first and then some gray. And really, that's pretty much it. I'm not trying to make it look like new. We just want it to work good. A little bit of damage on the seat there as well, bearing seat. Good. It'll work fine. Nothing wrong with that. So far I've done good on this axle and I ain't ran into any bad bearings. <laughs> so luckily no bad bearings in these wheel hubs or spindles and that's a really good thing because good quality bearings are quite expensive. The problem with reusing these and pulling a whole axle down is that uh, it would be easy to mix match them and you don't want to do that with used bearings because they will develop a wear pattern that you're not going to be able to see by eye and if you start swapping them you know it's just going to accelerate wear and cause yourself problems that you wouldn't have had had you just labeled the bearing and put it right back where it come from and all i use for stuff like this is a dicom paint marker it stays on real well so that saves at least a couple hundred bucks probably more than that you know, just in bearings on this, uh, on this axle. So that's a good thing. So this is probably the original grease in this front hub here. I think the other one had been packed, but there's not a ton of grease in there. I guess it was plenty. But uh, you can see the bearing is a little bit golden. I'm not for sure, but it may have gotten a little warm at one point or another. Probably not quite enough grease, but you know, who knows.
So to get off those tie rod ends, they're stuck on there with a taper. And I just take a hammer, you know, and tap around on the spindle a bit. Not too hard, but enough to maybe you know, upset that taper just slightly. And a lot of times they'll pop out. Doesn't always work, but I don't like to beat on these too much for obvious reasons. So because I'm into this axle this deep, I think it would be a shame not to replace these, the upper and the lower ball joints on both sides. Even though these feel good and tight, they are 30 to 35 years old, and it do, it's not gonna get any easier to replace these than what it is right now. I'm getting out of here. Put him back, put him down there in the water. Go in the water. So after a quick flush, there's a look inside of the uh, the pumpkin, I guess you'd call it, the diff carrier, the ring gear, and the diff gears. Looks really good. It did start to get some corrosion on it. You can see on the ring gear it just was starting. Not enough to hurt anything. We'll take a little piece of scotch Brite and dust that off. But all the bearings and stuff feel good. And I don't think there's anything wrong with this at all. I don't want to take this out. I don't think there's any benefit from doing that. Nice wear pattern on the uh, ring and pinion. So I don't want to upset any of that. Even though it, technically it shouldn't. But you get the idea. I don't think it's necessary. So I'm just going to flush this out one more time and call that good. And it looks about like new, other than the small bit of corrosion that it got from sitting. So here's our replacement components for that front end. Unfortunately, we're not gonna have time. <laughs> Nowhere near the time to put all this stuff in this week. Uh, tearing down and cleaning up an axle like this is a ton of work because there's a lot involved. Spicer U-joints, that's what come in that axle factory. and. The, they're good stuff. These are the greasable ones, so we will be able to grease our uh, universals up at the front end, which is a good thing. we got National Wheel Seals, Master Pro rubbers for our dust seals on our uh, drive shafts, and then Mood Ball Joints, which are very good. These are the greasable ones, so we'll be able to grease those as well. I'm not a big fan of the greased for life components, and definitely not a fan of the cheap ball joints. They don't hold up. Um, so when you can grease them, if they do get a little moisture in them, if you service it regularly you can displace that moisture out of that joint and make them last a lot longer if you just take a little time and service your stuff so good components should uh, make us a good quality front axle when we're done so this front axle is coming together really good the disassembly and the cleanups what takes forever really replacing the components that need replaced in this doesn't take all that long but uh, getting them all cleaned back up and ready to go back together is, is the time consuming part. So I look forward to getting this thing installed under the truck with the heavier springs and uh, seeing how it, how it does. Still got to do the rear end, but I decided to do the front end first, which is the most complex axle, uh, because the last time I drove that truck, actually to get the pile of wood that you've seen in the beginning of this video, I was driving through a fence row and hit a big stump, bent the tie rod end. Now my front wheels are all cockeyed <laughs> drives like absolute garbage and I could barely hold it on the road to get it home. So I was like, you know what, I've had enough and I'm going to do the front axle first. So need to put the ball joints in. That's a pretty neat process. I've done a bunch of these in the past. They're pretty common to, to go out. You do need a special tool. We'll, we'll go over it, but uh, that'll be fun. So that's it. We got to do the universals and the drive shafts as well. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's chipped in. You know, put a dollar in a hat. Much appreciated. Um, this stuff adds up quick. <laughs> Everybody knows. I didn't put any performance parts in this because that adds a whole other level of complexity and you start stressing parts with high performance parts and you're always chasing that weak link, weak link in the chain. I think it's always best to go back, unless you want a race car, full bore, replace it with factory components and then do it all the pop-ups at once or else you'll be chasing your tail. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And these aren't axles you'd hop up anyway.
That's my opinion. So thanks for watching, viewers, patrons, subscribers, and I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you wanna scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower. Summer